after each belt is cut. There we go. One cut drive belt. Right, that needs sanding. Four drive belts cut, sanded and cleaned up with acetone. So that means I can put in the secondary drive installation, which has sprockets at the top here, which has a chain drive on, which will drive the main rotor shaft. My belts will go on here and connect to the primary drive, which is the engine. And then there's a couple of more pulleys down here, which will have belts on. These two belts here, one of which, this one, will drive the water pump and the alternator. And this one will drive a kind of secondary accessory shaft, which will drive the fan. That all goes on to this which will cost you around 1800 quid, which is the secondary drive unit itself. Basically, back to your old bike, it's a freewheeling hub, which means the shaft here can turn that way, but it can't turn that way. And the reason this is so important, and this is where your sprag clutch is, is inside here, is if the engine fails and it stops, this part of the drive will stop turning, but it means that the rotor blades can still turn, which means that you can auto-rotate to get to the ground. And also, because this shaft is rotating, it'll also turn all the drive that will still give you power to your tail rotor, so you can turn the chopper into wind or whatever to do your emergency landings. A very important bit of kit. It goes straight in the ship. Right, I don't know why we keep calling it a ship, because it's clearly not a ship, but that's what we all call it. Now this fiddles in here. Get that in there like that. Pete, mate, yep. have you got the belts? Yep. Those belts in here, sir. There they go. Up that way. Like that. Oh. And then over. You need your Where? friends through there. Through that. It's a fiddle. Have we got the labels the right way they, now? Are they? Can yes, you read yes, them? Yeah, I can yeah, read yeah. them here. Good. Yeah. So now, this can go up and rest it on there. There's a plate on the bench, mate. Plate? Yeah, got it. Okay. Up, up it says. Got it. <laughs> How's your back? <laughs> In the A, but yeah, cool. Can you do that? Or are you too old? I'm a bit. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> okay, that's one. Hey. Is that fine? Fine. Yeah. So we'll just whack that on there for now. Sort it like that. Okay, there's a lot of levelling up to do here to make sure this is absolutely perfect. And then there's another bearing down here in a bracket which will attach into this square section tube here. And then some more levelling. It looks a bit of a jumble now, but we'll soon have it sorted. Right, all talked up, but is it level? My favourite little gadget. There we go, she's on. Two zeros, superb. And in the other direction, two zeros as well. Excellent, love it. Next job uh, is to do a bit of wiring on the main shaft sprocket. The sprocket hub here is already bolted to the sprocket itself by these four nuts and bolts. Now the reason they need to be wired together is so that if one shears, you don't end up with a free floating bit of broken bolt flying around your engine so it's held captive. It's a very simple job, you just have safety wire, it's made of stainless steel and through the bolt head is a hole which you just feed the wire through. Then you need a special pair of wire twisters, you can try and do it with normal pliers but it's very, very difficult to get a perfect twist and you tend to end up with one strand wrapping around a strand that doesn't move at all, which actually isn't the way it should be. So, just pull the lever on the end, so like that, sorted. That feeds through the little hole to the other side. And then you just repeat the process to make sure that that bolt head is completely tethered to the sprocket. There we go. One down, four to go on this side, and then it'll be flipping it over and doing exactly the same with the nuts. Four bolt heads all wired up. I'll do the nuts on the back when it's in position. Pete, mate, can you yep. just hang on to that? Because okay. this goes on the bottom of the main rotor shaft. I need to just lift it up. Yeah, okay. Oh, a bit more yeah. so I can drop in the middle. Superb, right. Now a bit of heating required. The good old paint stripper. The idea is obviously to heat up the hub without heating up the shaft. 
see what's a bit dodgy putting a hot heat gun between your legs. <laughs> Thankfully I've got some 26 pound asbestos underpants that are also health and safety no VAT. That is now in place. Tell you what, I feel a bit odd though. I think it might have something to do with the fact I left my legs up the ladders. <laughs> right, Pete, yep. can you just take this clamp off and this yep. protector collar here? Mm -hmm. Should be a couple of. There you go, got them? Uh, take those two up. Hang on. Got them? No? Yes? Hold on, I'll, I'll lift it up, but I don't want to damage the paint. There you go. Got it? Go on, go on, go on. All right? Yeah, go on, go on. Happy? Yep. Yeah. What? Down, down, down. That's it, it's going in. Go on. That's it. It's in now. The small sprocket onto the secondary drive installation. That slots on there like that. Don't feed this through it. Stay there. Stay there. So let's just turn that around, bring it onto here. I tell you, when people get in this helicopter, those passengers, when it's finished, they will have no idea what is whirring around behind their heads. So the two chains ends meet there, and then we can drop in. Yes, yes. There we go. Like so. US Coast Guard, US Coast Guard, there are men in the water, there are men in the water. Uh, we're taking off, we're leaving now, and we're off. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, oh no, here we go. Oh no! Will you get up? Whoa, here she goes, round and round. Stay, stay. I'll be back. We are putting in the engine. It's a three-man job putting this engine in because it's a very difficult place to get to. So, Jonathan and David, the head helicopter hunt shows here at Southern Helicopters. I'll give me a hand. Way too high. Do you notice the way it's David? He doesn't do any hard work. He just does the foreman stuff. Sweating too much, are you, David? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> you. <laughs> Beginning to. <laughs> no, take your time. Take your time, David. No. Okay. Not a bad system, guys. Okay. Now, if you could just run along, because otherwise people will think you work on the helicopter. So anyway, um, I'm building a helicopter, it's a two-seater, it's an executive, it flies about 115 miles an hour. Will you leave, boys? Thanks. Just go now. Thank you very much. Go, 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 go. Excellent. Time to put some belts on. <laughs> I promised I would untangle this mess and sort it out. So that's the job in hand now. It's moving the belts in order, they're numbered one to four, into their positions on the pulleys. And the primary drive, which is this end, has got pulleys on as well. Four of them for these, so that's that. I have to admit that I never had any idea that helicopters had so much belt drive going on in them. Okay, there we go. Belt number one, the last one is on, sorted. A lot neater, I think you'll agree. Next job is to put the bolts in for the bottom bracket for the engine. It's a little known fact that over the last 12 years I've presented over 400 hours of television and in all that time this is my only fan.
This is going to go on the helicopter. It's a fan. It will draw air through the machine to cool the radiator, which we'll put on later. It has to get attached to a fan pulley hub here. Now, it fits over the little hub there, like so. You've got to be careful.